Today I'm watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 6, Episode 6. In the previous few episodes, we've seen this trio try to take down Sunnydale and Buffy unsuccessfully. We're seeing Buffy deal with some more real-world situations now that her mom has passed away. She was brought back from the dead and financial situations of being an adult are starting to kick in. Giles gave her some money, so I'm hoping that can tie her over for a little while. Giles is back in town. We saw Willow is using her witchcraft more and more, and Giles is not excited about that at all. I'm still very curious to see where this season's gonna go. I don't feel like we've an established villain yet. We did have Buffy say she went to go meet Angel, but we didn't get to see that interaction, and he knows that she's been brought back from the dead now. Buffy is trying her best to adjust and, you know, her friends don't know that she was in heaven, obviously, so she has to pretend like she's thankful for being brought back from hell. Nobody but Spike knows that she was in heaven. So, yeah, I'm very curious to see where the season's going to go. I hope the trio isn't our main villains throughout the rest of the season. I just can't take them seriously, which, I mean, is the goal of them to bring comedic relief, which is nice, but it's just, you want there to be some kind of suspense and some kind of tension, but... Yeah, I'm very curious to see where the storyline with these three is going to go. But thank you so much for sharing and this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And check back often for more awesome content. I know you never loved me, but you treat me like a man. A Halloween episode? Oh, I'm excited now. The past few Halloween episodes have been amazing, so I'm very excited. Careful me, mateys. These be fireflies. Spat That kid was definitely in like a famous TV show. He looks very familiar. Not a real pirate. Real pirates live on boats and don't look stupid. I want to say his name is like Beans or something. Six years old. Halloween's so lame. But you get to dress up and play games. Sanders gonna teach me a new one after work called Shiver Me Timbers. Oh my. Helping magical texts. <laughs> I'm all over it. How about you? Ever play Shiver Me Timbers? Not really much for the timber. <laughs> if I see one more idiot that thinks witches are all hairy moles and rotten teeth. Excuse me, do you have any candy corn? Well, she's the sweetest thing that ever lived. Oh my god. Into the tunnels, running low on burger weed. Stir it in with the blood. Makes it all hot and spicy. Weird and unpleasant. Can you go a bit wonky if you cram them too close? Thanks. Feel like a bit of the rough and tumble? Spike, what are you doing? Me? You? Patrolling? Hello? That's not what he meant and we know it. Maybe tomorrow. Hmm. It's not like I don't already have plans. Great pumpkins on the 20. Yeah, Charlie Brown. And the great pumpkin? Oh, Spike. <laughs> Go help Giles. Yeah, I didn't think we'd see Buffy back working the magic shop this soon. Supernatural threats give you the well-deserved rest, as should you. Yeah, what about costumes that take over your personality? Or a great episode. What of us? Right, exactly. So I should patrol to avoid any of that, and I'm bagging. Yeah, it's interesting how Halloween's the one night that she doesn't have to worry as much. Something's obviously still gonna go awry, because that's what happens in Sunnydale. I don't like carnivals. We've had enough, uh, please. No clowns. I don't want anything like that. I saw, like, the figurines he walked past. And it sounds like he's singing, like, a carnival-themed song. Something special this year. It's gonna be like Tales from the Dark Side. They're gonna be a kid in the cupboard. Store go boom. Arr. That was the most incredible thing I have ever experienced. Amber Tamblin's in this episode? Okay, interesting. Jaunty self cleaning incantation. It'll be like Fantasia. We all know how splendidly that turned out for Mickey. Ha ha ha! As he hands her a broom. Yeah. Which is completely different than- You do this every night? Every time I close out the cash register. The dance of capitalist superiority. <laughs> Anya. She's 15 and my sister, so don't eat- Oh. 
Hey, everybody. Are we finally going to find out? Is he finally going to tell everybody? Hey, here, have some money. <laughs> Not time to decorate for the next one. Why right, wait? Kazorita te tamari. Well, I was like, let's use magic to clean up. Let's use magic to decorate. Like, so voila, not a problem. Thank you. Well, that was not, our Joust is not impressed. Yeah. Naturally. Well, you can fight monsters naturally. Sticks and stones. Don't recommend it, though. Well, I was like, let's, it's just easier to use magic. So why wouldn't I? About what you're... Sorry, just checking on the chips. It's okay. We're done. Yeah, Tara's like wants her to be cautious of her okay, magic hey. use and Ew. Willow's like, what's the problem? It's just decorations. So where are we meeting? The park. That's where all the monsters gather on Halloween. That's what Dawn's worried about, yeah. I haven't seen Amber Tamblin in a show in a long time. <laughs> hey, Justin. I know. I've seen you around at a couple of parties. Does Dawn have a crush? Oh my. Yeah! Three points! Woo! Witches don't really look like that. Why? Like, the eggs? Sure, it's Halloween. It's not a good idea. But whatever. But like, why are you puncturing this guy's tire? That sucks. That's gonna be so expensive. You have to plan the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No way. I'm guessing this is the town's haunted house or something like that. Yeah, there we go. And the door is open. Yeah. Oh. Shouldn't ought to mess with those. Sometimes they bite. Oh my. <laughs> Come on inside, kids. Got something special for you. Daddy's got a treat. And that's your cue to run away. Anybody ever phrases that sentence to you? Run like hell. Time for the treats. Who wants to help daddy in the kitchen? He's got to stop referring to himself as daddy. Oh, Justin's a vampire, and they invite him inside. Okay, no, well, I was not expecting that. I was like, are we just going for the stereotype of like a creepy neighbor? Nope, vampire. Oh, good night. There's Rice Krispies with pumpkins on them. Oh. Watch that right now. So, what do you think? Lunchables? Or should we go all the way and turn them? We can't do this. He's not going to turn Dawn. Come on. Before we wither and die. I mean, there's just so much to consider, though. I mean, planning the wedding and, and new cars, house and babies. Xander's freaking out. He's like, I didn't think any of this. What do you expect? I just want to taste you. Ah, gross. Drink your blood. Yep, exactly. Should be timbers. <laughs> Just wow. Oh my god, that was your first. What? Yeah, Don's first kiss. Yeah. My tongue's all horrible and sticky, and I'm pretty sure I drooled on you. So just please tell me how awful it was. Oh my, going back for more. The Princess Leia costume, yes. Do they know their brother and sister? Do you think she's here? <laughs> Do you think Dawn might have come here? It's where I'd be if I were 15 and on the lamb. Really? The bronze? You haven't seen the bronze in a long time. Mama Yama came from humble, geek infested roots. Infested roots trying to turn me on. What? How? How? I'll just shift everyone who isn't a 15 year old girl into an alternate dimension. Willow, you can't just do that. But like a fraction of a second. They won't Still, even you can't just take advantage. Like, come on, man. Willow, you are using too much magic. What do you want me to do? Just, just sit back and keep my mouth shut? Well, that'd be a good start. Wow, 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 wow. Willow. 
to Callum. Tara. Yeah, Willow's like, oh, I'll just send everybody to an alternate dimension. Like, that's not decorations. You're messing with actual people, even if it is just for a second. Like, come on. She's just turning to magic for every possible situation now. And cue vampire face. Yep. And she figured it out. Oh my god. Missed. Cemetery. Halloween. Yeah, all three of those things together. Yeah, that's not what I would sign up for. Oh no. Shark bit me. Like you weren't asking for it. I feel certain she wasn't. What do you know about a grandpa? Oh, more than you think, buddy. Good night. Get him, Giles. Oh, the tree will do it. <laughs> Bye. Oh, good. There's more of them. And Giles is by himself. No, 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 no. I don't like this at all. Were you parking with a vamp? I, I didn't know he was dead. Living dead. Shut up. <laughs> now is not the time for semantics. I don't believe you. Oh, like you've never fallen for a vampire? Whoa, bringing that back. Okay, here we go. It's you. Uh, excuse me. Can we fight now? <laughs> it's your malfunction, man. He's like, I got a chip in my brain. I don't want to talk about. It. No, I'm a rebel. You're an idiot. <laughs> oh, good night. Oh, bonked him. Oh, kicks to the face. A classic every time. What the antenna? Oh my god. Oh. What the car door? Oh my god. <laughs> Good night. I do. Dawn! Come on, seriously? She was just gonna let him do it? Oh, I see. Okay, for a second I was like, Dawn, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. Is that her first vampire that she's killed? Where do we order obscenely muscular male strippers? Anya. Well, I'm kidding, jeez. You're right. I'm glad you're here to take care of it. Don't be too hard on her, okay? Buffy, come on. Seriously? I get that Giles is, like, the, you know, potential father figure. Like, he's obviously been that way with Buffy, but... I don't think he appreciates just having to do all the hard conversations and Buffy doesn't want to. Tired. Okay. Let's just forget it ever happened. Is Willow going to use a spell to make her forget? Forget. Willow, come on. You can't do this every time you have a fight. That's horrible. <laughs> Your feet are cold. <laughs> Better warm me up. Mm. That's not fair to Tara. Come on, Willow. That's so manipulative. So, uh, you're not mad? About what? Willow, honestly, oh man, that's not good. Not good at all. So that was my first time watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 6, Episode 6. I was very excited when I saw that it was going to be a Halloween episode, but honestly, this episode was a bit of a miss for me, especially compared to the Halloween episodes we've seen in the past. I just felt like the focus of this episode was Dawn and Xander, who usually aren't our strongest characters. It was interesting to see Dawn get her first, you know, date, her first kind of like rebellious teen moment, you know, post key life, if you will. And, you know, she lies out where she's going. She sneaks out with her friends. There's this guy that she has a crush on and, you know, has her first kiss and this kind of like impromptu date. And 
I think that was her first vampire that she killed. And of course, the one she has to kill is the guy that she's on the date with. So not a great first date experience. Obviously, you him turning out to be a vampire, but there was no real like bigger story. Usually the Halloween episodes are so well done and they did reference them in this episode with the costumes and, you know, that party they'd gone to before at the fraternity when Anya was the bunny. So I was kind of expecting something along those lines. And honestly, this season so far has been a bit slower. I still don't know where we're going. The trio wasn't involved, but I know we haven't had a vampire, like just regular vampires in a while, but it felt like for a Halloween episode, just a filler episode. I wish it would just been like a regular Monster of the Week episode. I wish it hadn't been attached to Halloween because now I feel like we don't get to have a great Halloween episode. I do feel like there were some bigger takeaways from this episode and not so much the Xander and Dawn storylines. We did see Xander obviously become very apprehensive once he starts realizing all the things that come with being married and being an adult. And I think Giles was trying to remind him, maybe in a not so subtle way, that, hey, you know, you're going to need a house and, you know, you got forever to spend forever together, basically. And his face kind of just drops and you can see he's like panicking and... It was a very sweet moment when he was looking at Anya and he was just realizing how in love with her he is and is like, I need to tell everybody. Like, we know it's been months since Buffy was gone, so they've had this secret for months. And Anya is like, he's waiting for the right moment, but when is that going to be? So I'm glad he finally told everybody, but it went from a quick moment of happiness to then having the focus of this like impromptu engagement party and him kind of realizing oh well, this is a big choice and I definitely feel like he's getting cold feet. I feel like Anya's all in and I feel like Xander wants to be all in but obviously it's a big decision so I'm curious to see where that's gonna go if they're gonna go through with it if he'll bail I have no idea um please no spoilers but he's definitely apprehensive and is getting nervous and anytime someone was talking about it he just was very silent and was you know kind of sinking in all the things that he would have to you know do. Amber Tamblin was in this episode as a guest star and I haven't seen her in TV for a very, very long time. So that was interesting. It's always interesting when we see these guest stars who have gone on to do, you know, other things. Like we had Pedro Pascal was in an episode a while ago and, you know, other stars have been in previous episodes. I was not expecting Buffy to be back working at the magic shop, especially given the time loop of the previous episode. And she even brings that up when, you know, she's talking to Spike and is trying to find something in the basement. But she's like, it's just for one day and to help people out. And honestly, I thought Giles would have left because the way they ended the last episode, he, you know, gave her money and that kind of seemed like the end of it. And he has no made no plans to stay. Like, as far as I know, he's still like sleeping at the couch and, you know, at Buffy's house. But who knows? We do see Dawn stealing more and she admits that to Justin as well. She like took the coin early on in the episode. So I was thinking, okay, this coin is kind of being our story. Like it's possessed or something. And then we had this decoy storyline of this guy who, you know, the neighborhood is built up to be this, you know, creepy old man and he's just a guy. And they definitely set it up, obviously, so the audience would believe that he had something suspicious, but apparently he just really likes carnivals and, you know, invites these guys in and Justin decides to unalive him. And we find out that it's in fact Justin being a vampire is the story we're going to follow. I didn't think they would turn Dawn because that would have set off a whole new trajectory for her character, but that was their intention, so I'm definitely glad that didn't happen. To me, I think the biggest part of this episode was Willow and Tara having this fight about, you know, Willow using magic so much, and she is using it at the drop of a hat. And I understand it would be very easy to just, oh, I'll just snap my fingers and this is done, and I'll just do this, and problem solved. And she mentions, you know, cleaning up the magic shop after a busy day, and she puts up the decorations uh, for the engagement party, and... At first, Tara's kind of like, hey, you know, trying to suggest, like, maybe we can just go to the store and do things. Like, we don't have to use magic all the time. And and Willow's rationale is like, why wouldn't we? We have these abilities, so why wouldn't we use them? And Willow doesn't see any harm in just using her magic as casually and however she wants, basically. In her mind, you know, these are her powers to use. And she snaps at Tara a little bit at the bronze. And Tara tells her, you know, like, I am saying something because I care about you. And I don't want to sit by and watch something happen happen like I am speaking up because I care about you and you know she loves her so much and Willow just saying like hey yeah I do have these powers and the same when she kind of snapped back at Giles not that extreme but I feel like that was the same tone that she was you know going for I think the final straw for Tara was when Willow was like oh my god
dimension for a second and then send them back to find Dawn. It's like, what? Like, how? Like, the decorations, sure. You know, cleaning up, fine, whatever. But literally messing with humans and would they remember? Probably not. But still, that's not the point. It's that Willow feels like she can just manipulate her powers to whatever she wants and that's totally fine and there's no consequences. And then obviously at the end when we see Willow makes Tara forget, like completely manipulates her. Tara was very upset and she had every right to be and, you know, she just wants to go to bed and they could talk about this tomorrow and Willow doesn't want that. She wants to have a nice evening with her girlfriend and, you know, decides to make Tara forget all about this fight she had. And I'm just like, what happens if Tara figures this out? And how often are you just going to make her forget? They're bound to have another fight at some point. You know, it can't be happiness all the time. So what is Willow going to do? Just consistently like wipe her girlfriend's memory? Like how messed up is that? But Willow didn't seem concerned about it. She was like, okay, I'll just do this little spell over here. And like, it was like a 10 second, you know, decision basically. And then, okay, now back to, you know, being in bed cuddling with Tara and everything's fine. It's just like, how did we get here? How did we get to this point? And Tara's, you know, explanation of when we use magic to protect people and to save lives, that's a totally different situation. This is Willow just dabbling in whatever she wants for her own selfish needs and to make her own life easier which is in no way fair to Tara. And yeah, I'm worried what that's going to mean because she can't just keep doing that. It's such a betrayal of trust and so many, many other issues. And I don't think Willow meant to... Actually, I don't know what Willow was thinking. She's just making decisions that don't seem like the person we knew from you know a few seasons ago. I feel like magic is slowly taking over her life and I don't know where that's going to go. I don't think it was fair for Buffy to put that big conversation on Giles. Like, he was out there slaying vampires, trying to find Dawn. Like, he's the one who got the phone call. He's talking to the other parent, getting yelled at, saying, like, why isn't my kid there? Like, your kid was supposed to be at, like, our house. What's going on? And Giles is like, I, I'm the father figure, like, l figuratively, not literally. And Buffy is getting older now, and I think he's getting tired of her, you know, I don't want to say dumping things on him. I think she is so grateful that he's there and that she gets that relief for a tiny, tiny few seconds and can let somebody else handle something. But the conversation with Dawn definitely should have been something she did. And it was interesting to see Buffy school Dawn for being with a vampire when obviously we know Buffy has been with Angel and, you know, she hangs out with Spike all the time as well. So yeah, that was a bit, you can't really, you know, use that one. But I get why Buffy was obviously very concerned that Dawn was out there, you know, and they didn't know where she was. Maybe Buffy was worried that as a sister, it wouldn't come across as like seriously as she meant it to be with that conversation. And she needed someone that I don't think Dawn is afraid of Giles, but maybe she needed someone who's like more of like an authoritative figure to have that conversation. So Dawn would understand. But I feel like Dawn's beating herself up enough as it is. And yeah, I definitely thought Buffy would have to have that conversation, but just runs up the stairs and is like, thanks, Giles, you got it. And I don't think, yeah, Giles really appreciated that. Overall, I thought it was an okay episode. I'm a bit disappointed that this was our Halloween episode. They've always been my favorite of the seasons, and this is the one we've got. And yeah, it just wasn't my favorite. It was okay, but in no way my favorite. And like I said, I feel like season six is off to a bit of a slower start, which... You know, season five was intense. There was so much happening and we brought Buffy back to the start of the season as well. But next episode will be episode seven. So getting closer to that halfway mark. So yeah, I'm very curious to see where the season's going to go, who our villain's going to be, what's going to happen. It was interesting to see Dawn get her first, you know, kiss and everything and get to explore more of being a teenager and trying to live her life. And of course, it's Sunnydale, so she would run into a vampire. I don't know what's going on with Giles, with Tara, with Willow, what they're going to do. Xander's obviously getting cold feet about this wedding. I don't really have any predictions for this season yet because I feel like we're still, you know, getting our footing. So I'm not really sure where we're going to go. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. And it sounds like he's singing like a carnival themed song. He's gotta stop referring to himself as daddy. His Rice Krispies with pumpkins on them. And the Princess Leia costume, yes. What the car door, oh my God. 
Yeah, it's interesting how Halloween's the one night that she doesn't have to worry as much.